Illinois for five thank you, minutes. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for holding such an important hearing. <clears throat> like the ranking member, uh, I'm from Illinois as well. Illinois is a mess. We all know that. Um, no way is the Federal Government going to bail out my State. My voters, just our constituents won't allow it. it, it I, I feel like I left the movie uh, right before the good part, um, and I'm, I'm sure the case was being made that bankruptcy isn't feasible. So no bailout, bankruptcy, bankruptcy isn't feasible. Um, let me just start out with a real quick round robin question. Um, Give me, give me your 20-second solution then, just so I can, I can walk out of here with that takeaway. We're not going to bail you out. Uh, Bankruptcy is probably not feasible. So what are the states going to do? Let's just, I mean, just hop and, and give a quick one to that. Go ahead, Ms. Jillings. Well, I think voters in many states are already doing the right thing. We've got new governors from both parties that are starting to address what do we do about pensions for future employees, what do we do about Medicaid costs, something Congress can certainly help with. The, these are questions for voters in the individual states pressuring their own lawmakers to change state laws and in some cases state constitutions, yes. not something the federal government can or should do for them. So in some ways the system is working if imperfectly. I guess my question is if, if there's going to be no bailout from us and bankruptcies aren't feasible, a state is falling off the cliff. Let's imagine that one in the next two or four months literally is going to fall off the cliff. Uh, we can change laws that will impact things in the future, but what do you do for that state that's just fallen off the cliff? Mr. Steele. Excuse well, me. My, my answer is going to be I really think we need to put a bankruptcy uh, okay. regime in place to deal with precisely that problem. That's, that's the only problem we absolutely need bankruptcy for. And I'll add one thing to that, which is uh, I agree that states are doing the right thing, and <coughs> I, I hope the optimism we've heard today is correct, that most of them can muddle their way through. But some measures are a lot tougher than others. For instance, yeah. pension reform uh, in a state, well, there, there's a lot of debate in Illinois about what can and can't be done right now. But in many states, require, does require a constitutional change. And I think that's pretty unrealistic. So, um, so some of the options are more feasible than others. Ms. Norcross, your state's falling off a cliff. What are you going to do? Um, I'd say close the defined benefit plan and figure out how you're going to pay out what's, uh, what's been accumulated. Slap. Um, I think states can use their normal processes of dealing with their taxes and their expenditures uh, to um, set themselves on a, a right path. Illinois has a particularly deep hole. I've been writing and talking about Illinois' problems for the last 25 years of, of its fiscal mismanagement. Um, I'm a native Chicagoan. But the, um, it's, um, um, but it can, you know, it just needs to do those things it needs to do to, to, to get out of it and to get, bring, bring itself <clears throat> balance. And it has the tools. It just needs to use them. Thank you. Let me, let me uh, in, in my remaining time, let me quickly just ask a, a, a one quick question about market risk. Uh, Bill Gross, who manages PIMCO, one of the largest mutual funds um, in, in the country, uh, he stated that a low or negative real interest rate for an extended period of time is the most devilish of all policy tools. Uh, it's interpreted to mean what he's saying is that the Fed's action to lower interest rates helps our debtors, such as states and municipalities, while harming all those who worked hard and saved money. Um, Ms. Norcross, Ms. Gelinas, quickly, in effect, the Fed is enabling debtors to reduce their debt uh, on the backs of those that saved money. Is that right? Um, I, I, would, I would hesitate to, to say that um, right now. But. Ms. Gelinas? There is complacency. States and cities have borrowed at very low rates, not just <clears throat> the past couple of years in extreme conditions, but really for two decades now. If rates go up, including you know, possibly way up, they will have to get used to a very different environment very quickly. Could you argue that the, the Fed's quantitative easing program is in effect, has in effect been a bailout for states and municipalities? Sure. This is a, this is a bailout for anyone who, who owes money. In states and municipalities may not be the biggest proportionate benefit of this, uh, but it, it certainly helps them. Ms. Norcross, you concur? I, I concur. Okay. Thank you. And, and Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you.